Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, we have newly minted two-time world champion, Dan Whiffen. Dan, thanks so much for being here. How's it going? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm feeling great. <laughs> You got two world titles uh in the in the 800 free in the 1500 free you set a national record and personal best in that 1500 free 143407 um just how are you feeling with your results overall uh from doha yeah i'm really happy um i so coming to doha we use it as a, like a test olympics uh like event schedule and we added the 400 this time to see if I could manage all three. And uh, yeah, I mean, my expectations going in were to try and be on the podium because Ireland had never had a medal, a world championship meet. So uh, that was the goal and uh, goal accomplished. <laughs> goal accomplished. Goal accomplished twice. Um, yeah. yeah, congratulations on that. Um, t tell me about managing the schedule. You know, <clears throat> you, you, like you said, you swam the 400. 800 and 1500 um yeah tell me about it what what were your takeaways from managing that schedule yeah so obviously we're racing if we're doing the 4 and 15 we're racing five days out of the the eight so a pretty pretty heavy schedule and you start first day off with the 400 heats i mean from my experience i mean i've never had done a 400 at a world champs level i did it short course at the europeans uh, i'm european champion in it uh, but uh, it's completely different long course. And uh, I think when we uh, got through the heats, I was uh, I was very shocked with uh, like how 400s feel. I think they're kind of like a big sprint event for me, to be honest. It will be the lowest I go to. And uh, then we're in the final. I was just excited because um, going to the meet, we, expect, we weren't expecting to medal really in the 400 freestyle. I mean, if maybe fight for the minor medals, I'd say, but uh, it was more about just getting into the final to really see if we could push out two pretty good swims. And I mean, I was I, in the heats, I was a 45.5. So uh, I was pretty happy with that swim, um, especially because um, in February, I'm not really expecting to be able to hit my personal best because um, you still got another six months after the cycle or the rest of the season where I've got to go on altitude camps and stuff like that. And then in the final, I went a little bit slower because I had a little bit of a pacing issue where I went out a bit too hard for me. But uh, it was a great experience. And then obviously, uh, day next day after that, we had a day off. And then we had the 800 freestyle heats, which was fast. Uh, a lot of people got kicked out who probably should have made it back. And I think this is just why uh, distance freestyle is getting so fun because nobody would normally would watch the heats a distance freestyle event and now everybody is watching them because somebody has to miss out mm -hmm. and uh it was crazy we were in the second last heat because i was the second seed going in and um yeah i think uh, florian wellrock missed out in that in the 800 heats and then the final was a whole nother story so you get like 32 hours i think something like that around 30 some hours in between the heat and final so i think i went 746 uh i tried to chill the heats like, well, I mean, you can't chill, but you got to try and relax. So I was basically just practicing my technique. And then uh, last 50, had a little burst in because uh, to make sure I get top two in the heat. The heat, Because if you're not getting top two, your opponent uh, is getting a bit risky, basically. Uh, then come around to the final, I was in lane five. And uh, going into it, I knew where the race was going to come from. It was going to come from Greg Pelt on. Well, he was in the one outside lane, and then Elijah Winnington was in the other outside lane. So I told, I said to Elijah before the race, I was like, my head's going to be on a swivel here. I'm going to be going just constantly looking left, right. Uh, so we basically, my goal for that one was, I knew it was possible to win. Uh, I had the fastest PB in the, in the whole field by quite some margin. And um, basically, it was to show the confidence that I've got in myself that my pacing is correct and that I can win the race by doing what I believe is right. So uh, 
my goal there was to basically show some confidence in myself to really go and uh, focus on myself and let the race be how it is. So obviously, Elijah Winnington goes really fast out, goes 346 to the 400, I think. And uh, so on the world record pace um, for the majority of the first half of the race, and I'm probably around at least a body length back, if not more. And uh, as soon as we, my goal was to try catch him by uh, 400 meters. I mean, I left it a bit closer than that because I caught him by 500. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was just trying to control, <coughs> I was trying to even split the race, basically even negative split. And then uh, as soon as I got Elijah, I knew that I had to keep going because if I went level with Elijah, then that last 50, he's got that 400 speed. So he's going to be able to come come back fast. So I knew if I had at least half a body lamp to a body lamp on him going into the final hundred, I'd be pretty pretty sorted. And then Greg, uh, just being level with him last hundred to fifty, because I knew that I could take him out last fifty with my speed. And uh, yeah, that's basically how the race planned out and uh, worked out really well. And I think I ended up winning by two seconds in the end, which was uh, kind of crazy. And Elijah like kind of fell off a bit and then came right back in the end and got and snapped like took away the silver medal so that was a that was a very fun race and i think it means a lot it means a lot to me because coming to fourth places last time and the field still stacked i mean we were missing who bobby thinks i'm short out of the the whole field in that race and the 400 we were only missing sam short but we had some new additions into the 400 so really i'd say it was pretty much a full packed out meet for the distance freestyle and uh yeah so basically this is like that meant so much to me winning that medal because i knew that i could perform on the world stage and i know it didn't take a pb for me to win the 800 but realistically a lot of the time when you're racing it shouldn't take a pb to win it's going to take who's got the best race strategy and uh, that's what i've taken away from this meet from the 800 freestyle and then uh next obviously we went down we had the 1500 freestyle in about three days, like two and a half days time after the final. So uh, just went through my whole recovery procedure. Uh, my coach, Andy, was there with Austria. So he was taking me through changing the plan up of what we did. Uh, he gave me a pretty tough set, actually, in between the 800 and 1500 heats because he said I needed to be ready for the heats. And um, so we, 1500 heats, it was very interesting. I've had a lot of mixed uh, comments on what the people thought of my 1500 freestyle heats. Uh, obviously, I was in the last heat, and um, so I had the advantage of seeing where everybody else went. And uh, they were very fast. Um, it was similar to what happened at the last World Champs. Me and Bobby Fink were in the second last heat, and we ended up going uh, 1443 uh, and ended up being like 1457 to make it back. So we went up too fast, in my opinion, then. But then uh, this time, obviously, Florian Welbrock made sure he made it back this time and he went 14.48, which pretty crazy heat, so I think. And then everybody kind of just followed in with that. And uh, I knew that if I was 14.50, sub 14.55, I was going to make it back. So my heat goal was to try and make that 14.54 look as easy as possible and uh, feel as easy as possible and maybe try and make other people miss out who would be a threat in the final. And uh, so we did, we uh, started that. I think we were on track to go 14.45 in the heats from about 800. And then as soon as I got to about 800 to 1,000, it kind of, um, I slowed the pace down of the race so that we'd uh, sort of be basically like doing half an effort. And um, we got to the uh, halfway line. I must have had 800 to 1,000. I think I must have had about... A body length, two body lengths lead on the field. So I uh, really started shutting down at like 1100. Uh, I was going like, there was a couple of 30.6s in there. And if you go in sub 15 minutes, seeing a, a 30.6 is probably not a great idea. But uh, yeah, obviously. And then uh, I just basically chilled. I tried my turns. I did a couple of underwater kicks, uh, which I never do. I tweeted that actually after my hits. <laughs> and then. Uh, yeah, and then I ended up Greg missed out, which I, uh, going to the race, I said to my coach, I was like, uh, Greg is on form, silver, uh, bronze medal on the 800. He'll be, he normally just holds the same pace for the 1500. So I need to be wary of him. And then he ended up going nice, so ninth. So basically took a lot of pressure off me because that's basically one of the main guys out of the 
out of the final. And then uh, fast forward 32 hours, uh, I was ready and um, yeah, I just got the job done. Went out. My, my time, my goal for that race was I kind of knew that I was going to win in my head after doing looking at everybody swims so far from the meet and looking how I was swimming. Uh, I didn't want to just go for the win. I wanted to try and PB. Uh, so I went off from the start. Uh, I was pretty controlled. I actually think the field went out quite slow. Uh, compared to what would normally go out on, and uh, I got taken out by the, there, was a, there was a guy I think from Turkey who was on my outside. I, I was in lane seven, and he was there. Uh, I think he went out to 100 faster than me, but then I just started grinding out the 29 lows, just kept repetitive, basically like a metronome that pace, and just keep going, going until I got to the end. And then, um, yeah, I finished on a 0.9 PB, so pretty happy that I was able to PB at a world championships. It keeps my streak up. Every time I've rested, I have PB'd, uh, so it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's really me. I could, maybe I'll talk about my celebrations as well. I know that I know that was a big point of the meet. Everybody was loving them. Uh, shout out to my twin. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. He fought with them all, fought the phone. The phone one was obviously like, uh, well, people take their own interpretation of it. I like. I'll, maybe I'll leave it out there for interpretation, but people hit it pretty much spot on that I was calling up and saying that I was going to win and then I put the phone down at the end when I won uh, I think 2024 is coldest moment so far in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> and then we had in the uh, 800 freestyle I did the um, looking at the watch uh, so I looked at the watch basically I was saying that I'm going for a time and then uh, when I finished, I tapped my chest and said, it's my time. <laughs> yeah. but it was just a bit of fun, really, to be honest. Absolutely. That was the best analysis of a meet I think any swimmer on this podcast has ever given. So <laughs> you not only win gold at the meet, you win gold on the Swim Swim podcast, <laughs> Dan Withen. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um yeah. There's so there's uh, so much that I have to ask about just on the follow up. Let's so I want to start with that mile. You were again, you were 1434.07. You won the, that heat by over 10 seconds. Um, do you were you surprised at all at how the field went out? I mean, obviously, every mile is going to be so different expectations yeah. versus what actually ends up happening because every yeah, everyone's pacing it different. Everyone's going with their own plan, but were you surprised that, like you said, the guy from Turkey in lane eight went out fast, but then everyone else, I mean, by the 400, you were body lengths ahead. Yeah. yeah I, well, if you look at the coaches stand on the, uh, in, in the side of the pool, I don't know if you can see that much on the, uh, the replay of it, but, uh, the Iris coaches and my coach just start shaking hands <laughs> to like 400 meters. <laughs> <laughs> they're like and they just knew they, they already knew that i was, won the race i think i must have, i don't know how much of a lead i had at 500 but i knew at 500 i'd won the race and then i knew that it was just really about uh grinding those 50s out and i'm not gonna lie like adding that 400 i think really um well it made it so much harder to be honest my i was hurting in that uh 1500 uh from 600 meters and to be honest I, all i was thinking about was like just stay the same, just keep it going. And when you've got like 900 meters left and you try to k tell yourself just to keep going, you know, you know, it's going to be a horrible race at the end, but it went by pretty fast after that, to be honest. And um, yeah, I was just um, making sure nobody was going to make a last minute sprint on me. I was like 10 seconds. Somebody's going to have to drop like a, a 20 point last 50, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. Break the world record in the 50 free and the 1500 free all in the same swim. Yeah. Um, and then going back to your prelim swim, I think that's such a gutsy move to not only to not only pace yourself, but to say, OK, maybe I can, you know, make a guy or two miss. And obviously that worked because, like you said, Greg, Paltrinieri missed the final completely and he was swimming uh right next to you or a lane or two over um how can you just tell me about the mastery you feel of distance swimming right now or just 
it, it seems like you are very in tuned into your race plan, your swimming and what you're trying to accomplish in every swim, not only the finals, but the prelims as well. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you just need to know your pace. If you know what I mean, you need to have that feel of the water. And I think I'm mastering what, uh, a 29, two pace feels like, or a 30 point over pace. I know the difference. And I think that's like, like a game changer for me because, I can, uh, I mean, if I'm holding 30.0s, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to hold that than 29.2s. So uh, you can really, if you know the difference, you can really save a lot of energy and uh, pacing and stuff like that. Like if I go out really hard, I'll end, it'll, it'll cost me in the back end. So it's really about finding these balances of what really works. For, well, for the athlete himself, it works it's different for everybody. But um, yeah, so uh, the heat's, I've always been like, I always say, I remember at Europeans, uh, I, I was saying to my uh, twin, Nathan, that I was like, oh, I'm going to throw the pace down so you can make it back. I mean, as a joke, but like, I mean, it, it's possible because if you're out in front by like a body lamp, uh, the people behind you will just be swimming off you. And mm -hmm. um, if you throw the pace down by like 0.2, they won't notice. You know what I mean? They'll just be trying to focus on staying at your feet or at your hip. So um, if you're doing, then it's so much, uh, it's like so much easier. And then you just uh, off a turn, do a couple of like, I don't know, do a couple of fly kicks off the wall and then put a body length on, then it makes it a lot easier. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think again, it's obvious that you have kind of, I think a couple things have to happen in order for, for you to put yourself in that situation not only do you have this mastery or you, you just, you have this feel for the water where you know what you're pacing so you can set that pace, but you've asserted yourself as one of these top distance swimmers. And so people are looking to you to set that pace in the heat, which I think is an accomplishment in and of itself. But again, just congratulations. Cause that, that's a, that's a big deal. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so what was the set that Andy, your coach, gave to you the day before the mile to get you ready for it? Well, it, it was pretty brutal, to be honest. <laughs> I was expecting to do like, oh, we'll come in, do a K a session in mm -hmm. between, not worry too much. Yeah, you ended up giving me like 4K. Uh, it was like, a, I can't remember. It was like something like, it was three, it was all short rest. So we're talking like 10 to 15 mm -hmm. seconds rest. So it's three twos, uh, three two hundreds, uh, at all, all at fifteen hundred pace. So what's that? One fifty six. Mm -hmm. uh, three twos, three ones, three fifties, uh, just basically straight, no extra rest, all 10, 15 seconds rest. And I was just like, I mean, he knew, he knows what he's talking about, obviously. I mean, <laughs> but you just gotta buy in with it to be honest. But it was a, it was hurting. But I feel like it actually did help me get into the race because the next morning I was like, I just felt amazing. And, uh, my stroke looked really good. We were also trying different technical elements because I'm not gonna lie. Like I thought my stroke in the 800 just looked horrible. Uh, well, especially the last 50, you can see that you probably, every has probably seen this underwater clip of me going with my head just absolutely burying down cause I was hurting. But uh, so we were really just trying to focus on technique points in between the two swims that, uh, and just about hitting pace. So, and then in the 1500 heats, my goal was to try and uh, work on those technique points and um, I, I just like try to swim as slowly but quick as possible. And uh, but yeah, and then the whole uh, the whole thing about the fly kicks at the end, because I obviously never kick or never <laughs> do any fly kicks off the wall. Uh, in training, uh, we train with the I am guys in Loughborough, and my friend Charlie was like, loves to do 10, 15 meters underwater off every wall. And sometimes I just do it too, just and he starts <laughs> laughing. So I told him, I said, Watch my last 50 <laughs> in the heats, and uh, I told him I'm gonna do some underwaters. <laughs> Did you see actually that they had a um, they had to do a VAR review in the 1500 uh, in the 800 heat, or is it 1500 or eight, 1500 heats? Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think uh, the Hungarian guy uh, who won the 10K went 15 underwater off the dive. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never seen them do a review before. And I thought it was quite weird. 
No kidding. Yeah, that's very unusual for a race. <laughs> that's, oh. That uh, yeah, obviously, usually no one's focusing on underwaters <laughs> in an eight hundred or fifteen hundred. That's uh, that that's pretty funny. Yeah, I I feel like you're just coming in here and <laughs> just throwing curveballs to everyone. Like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do underwater kicks. I'm gonna control the pace. I mean, it's you're you seem loose you seem like you're having fun and it seems like it's working very well yeah that was the secret to the meet was having fun um i think i think that's what takes away the nerves for me especially the walkouts uh they were just having fun i think they kind of like like uh, maybe people might see them in different ways but they were honestly just there to make sure i wasn't thinking about the race in the call room i was more thinking about don't do this walkout wrong instead of <laughs> my race because it really changed my mindset on the whole approach to the race and people sit in the core room, people like shaking, nervous, walking up and down, sweating, you know what I mean? Uh, it just makes such a difference if you think about something else and if you can take your mind out of the race for the 10 minutes before, because um, I mean, you're so much more relaxed and that's why I feel like they really helped for me. So I, I mean, any advice for younger swimmers, there you go. Think of something, the trying to stretch yourself a bit before the race but as soon as you hit two minutes walking out before your heat that's when you can dial in but don't overthink it too much just before you swim that's great advice and i i love when people get into their walkout and have fun with it because it's it's palpable you can see it and, and again for me it, it makes me smile right it makes me laugh it's like oh this is so it's entertainment which is i think what you want sport to be um and I think you're right also in that people take it different ways. And, and sometimes people see it as arrogance or, or it, it upsets them. You know, they, they think, oh, you're not taking this seriously enough. But I think that's the thing, right? If, if you're having fun, then you're yeah. going to perform mm -hmm. well. Yeah, 100%. It's uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand when people have a problem with things like that. But uh. I, I, I am glad that you you were having fun and yeah. then you're a proponent of that yeah 100 percent. and uh i went pretty viral i think as well for my walkouts. <laughs> yeah you you did have the best celebrations um yeah i loved i loved the watch i loved the phone um i yeah. think that was great and <laughs> i'm 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 with you on the train of best moment of 2024 so far <laughs> <laughs> um i do have a question about uh you representing ireland and that is do you know what i'm gonna ask <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um so i believe that you had the choice of representing great britain or ireland i mean you could you could represent either and yeah. i'm i'm just curious as to why you ended up choosing ireland and how you feel that has uh, affected your trajectory or just gone for you so far yeah, so uh, obviously I was born in Leeds, so that's in England. Mm -hmm. I was born in England and I moved over when I was one years old to Ireland. So I'm a Northern Ireland resident. So that means that I can pick either to swim for Ireland or for um, England. And that also means I swim for Northern Ireland in the Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you get a choice. I think the first time that I had, to ch when I actually had to choose, uh, was out for the European Youth Olympics. Uh, so I'm 16. It was 2017. And I tr I wanted to swim for Ireland. I knew I wanted to swim for Ireland. I did all my school in Ireland. I, uh, My family is Irish. Uh, my whole, everything I've done has been in Ireland. And I, all I wanted to do was represent Ireland. It's, my, it's where I'm from. That's how I see it as. And uh, I tried out for Ireland, but we had a problem where I couldn't get an Irish passport for some reason, it took forever. I'm talking, it took a year for them to finally send my passport through because obviously I had a British passport because I'm born in Northern Ireland and I'm Britain. So I, and my parents never thought to apply for the Irish passport. And uh, I ended up missing the criteria for the European Youth Olympics for Ireland because my passport was going to come two weeks after the meet. So I wasn't going to be able to represent them. So then I actually went and tried out. I actually went and tried went to British trials uh, in 2017 
Uh, just to swim, my coach wanted me to give the both options just to weigh it up to see how it was going to go. I ended up coming third for their trials and thing. So I was never going to get selected by them. But in my head anyway, I wanted to swim for Ireland. And it was a very sad day when they told me that my passport wasn't going to come because I was I obviously missed out in the competition. And then fast forward like two years on from that, we had the World Junior Championships and I made the time. I had my passport and that's when I represented Ireland for the first time. And uh, yeah, I mean, the choice was really, it was easy. I just knew, I studied there my whole life. All my friends are from Ireland and uh, that's who I wanted to represent. And I don't think it's ever affected my trajectory. I think uh, John Rudd has done a fantastic job of building these pathway programs in Ireland and that really anybody that goes through it is capable of becoming a world champion. And do you know what's even better? Uh, maybe some British people might not want me saying this or anything, but Ireland is better than Britain at distance swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think at this point, that's pretty fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you look at the national record book, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what One thing that was really cool about this specific world championships is that, uh, you know, Team Ireland really showed out. You know, it's like the medley relay made the final um i i it, you know obviously they won their first world's medal twice with you i mean it seems like ireland overall um had a great meet and is making some really good progress like you said yeah 100 percent. this world champs was really well i mean we could fast forward even to otter penny before because uh we got obviously i got the three goals and ellen walsh got the um bronze in the four medley and um I mean, we're just trying to build this sport. Uh, swimming is one of the most, if not the most watched Olympic sport uh, in the whole, uh, out of them all. And um, that's why we're trying to grow this in Ireland because uh, we just want more people to support us in Ireland because it's not a main sport. And uh, it's definitely becoming that way. I mean, uh, obviously my swims are kind of bringing the media attention and stuff like that, but it's a whole team effort. And, I mean, this championship's Mona made all three breaststroke finals, uh, which she's never done before, which is kind of crazy. Obviously, we had that medley relay, and uh, we have two medley relays qualified for the Olympics as well, so the women's and the men's. But I think the men's are going to, I don't know, they need to qualify two athletes with uh, Olympic cuts for the mm -hmm. policies. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, I don't think they've got any at the moment on the relay. So, um, yeah they have to do that but the women's side uh, I, i'd say they're going because they have look, two people with the cuts with mm -hmm. ellen and mona and uh yeah we're just i mean we're climbing up the medal table under 23s we topped the medal table uh european 23s uh otter penny we were i don't know where we came but we were up there <laughs> yeah. and uh world champs we came 10th on the medal table uh so and we got a swim and i also got summer of the meat which i think honestly kind of skeptical i i'm happy obviously <laughs> to receive it you know i'm not gonna say no to the trophy sure uh, but uh, i don't know i think it should go on the 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 best swim of the meet maybe not the amount of golds mm. because i feel like uh swim of the meet to me would be somebody breaking the world record that's how i i would look at but uh, yeah then again it's whatever they want i'll take the trophy so, it's a good <laughs> so do you think it should have gone to to pan Shen Le? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, 46, okay. 46.8? Yeah. Yeah, 46.8, <laughs> you know, it's pretty fast. And I was only like, I don't know what that equates to in 1500. It would be like a, a couple of temps under the world record. But uh, I mean, I think so. I think that 100 freestyle was definitely a, what started to meet, basically. Mm -hmm. it, it is interesting that <clears throat> I, I like that you said that because it's like this world championships from a times perspective kind of didn't know what you were going to get right because no. because it's february of an olympic year and so everyone's in a different place and then just first day boom world record the 100 free you're like whoa yeah. okay and then um and then and then the, you know that's the only world record we saw which is great but then kind of i feel like the rest of the times kind of started on the slower end but then as the meet mm -hmm. went on the times got faster yeah and then by the end of the meet like people you know People were swimming very, very fast times. Uh, there was a lot of top 10 performances, stuff like that, top 10. And then my mm -hmm. swim moved me from 7th to 5th. 
mm-hmm. all time. And I only dropped point nine. I was pretty I was pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah so I, I took who did I take Florian and Grant Hackett. I moved down with them. So I mean that was pretty cool to be fair. I was, was going to say, what do you think I of got to meet, I, I was going to say I got to meet uh, Dennis Cottrell. Okay. Grant old coach. That was yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> what? T- tell me about that experience. What was that like? Yeah, so, well, I mean, I just finished the meet. I was walking out, and uh, he, he came over to me and was like, uh, you reminded me of Grant when he used to swim uh, because he said he used to win by that amount when he used to do it. And I was like, that's crazy. And then he wanted a couple of selfies to send to Grant. But, um, yeah, so that was a pretty cool experience. Obviously, he's, like, one of the best distance coaches ever. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty happy. I'm actually, like, I feel like I've met a lot of new people at this meet as well. Uh, like, I mean, there's people in that, those finals that were, I've never met before. And then uh, as well, making the medals on the podium with the, the boys, some of them, it was uh, it was nice as well. Because obviously I've known Florian for a long time and it was nice to share a podium with him and uh, David Albrey, the French guy. And then in the 800, uh, Elijah Winnington, he's so nice. And I think it was just, it was a really fun meet, to be honest with everybody. And uh, I think everybody had a really good time, to be honest. I I feel like that was, um, you know, one of the really amazing and unique parts about ISL and like a meet like this or World Cups that obviously this was a world championships, but, you know, it's not the end of the year meet for everyone. And so <laughs> you get the international experience, you get people from all all walks of life all over the globe coming together and competing, but then they're loose enough they're you know, they're not lasered in to the point where everyone's still having fun. Everyone could have conversations and keep things light in the ready room and on the metal podiums. Um, so that I feel like that is really cool and, and, and a really unique part of meets like this. Yeah. hundred percent. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was just good to be there and obviously to come away with the two medals made it even better coming home. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going back home to Ireland next week. And I, I'm hearing some things that are going to happen, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. What What does that mean? Like celebrations or yeah, celebrations? Stuff do like you get that. a parade? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um. So uh, yeah, looking ahead, this weekend you're you're swimming at the uh, Bucks Championships, the British University Collegiate. Sorry. 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 Okay. Um. Yeah. What? Tell me a little bit about that. Are you just swimming kind of the standard 400 800 1500 yeah so uh i mean uh it's gonna be weird because we're basically fully rested for this yeah. championship i've got an extra week of taper somehow into this so uh <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know how it's gonna go i don't i i've done this in so for the world sh- oh, sorry for the european short course we didn't rest we just raced before so we went we i don't know how much we did probably did like an 80k week then we went and raced in rotterdam long course uh, I think I went 14.48 and 7.45 long course with like no rest, which was pretty solid, I thought. And then yeah. we, two days later, went straight into Europeans and then that was the rest. Because I feel like short course, you don't actually need to rest that much to be fast. It's mm-hmm. kind of like that. That's why I think the ISL works so well, because you didn't really need to, you don't, short course, you can swim. I mean, I saw my world record. I wouldn't even say that I was half rested, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I think it's like easier to race faster short course and then, but this one, uh, we'll see how it goes. I've done, I remember after the world championships in Fukuoka, we had two weeks and then we did European under 23s. And, um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like I took basically a week and a half with no training and then trained three days before the meet and I ended up going 14.35. So I feel like I can maybe carry the fitness through. But then after that, I kind of tailed off, which I kind of expected, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but Bucks, yeah, it's going to be a lot better. I, I Honestly, if I weren't best times, I wouldn't be surprised because we don't have doubles. It's just singles of each. So 4, 8, and 15, one per day. Oh, uh, nice. So it goes, it goes 15, 8. It goes 1,500, 800, 400, sorry, in that order. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would lo- I, I mean, I'd say I'd love to PB in the 1,500, but maybe I'll save it. Uh, for the later on down the line, but we'll see. I think 400 is definitely an area where we can maybe improve. So um, we'll have to have a go at a best time in that, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And that is a just so uh, our listeners are clear that's a long course meet. Uh, uh, there's not even prelims of the 400. It's just no, time it's just finals. Fastest, 
past this heat in the evening. <clears throat> That's great. <laughs> I know. Is are there prelims of other of, of like two hundred and below? Yeah, two hundred and below. They have prelims okay. and finals, so it's just because I think uh, they don't want to. It just takes so much time because you're, you're talking like at least a thousand athletes. Uh, wow, to, to that's a big meet. Uh, yeah, it's huge. It's but I mean, it's not like I'm talking like uh, there's gonna be could be fifty heats of the fifty freestyle. Um, your slowest person. <laughs> the, the, you're talking like over a minute. You know what I mean? It's just university Whoa. students. There's no uh-huh. time standards to be a part of it. You just <laughs> you just enter and turn up. I mean, I could. Be, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So like. But you, I guess, if you're watching, you won't see them because um, they put the fastest heats. They put the four fa- four fastest heats at the start of the meet of each event mm-hmm. and the heats. So then, and then they put all the slow heats after. So then, it's not taking away from the people who are actually gonna be come back for finals. I see. Okay, but, that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I'm looking forward to it. I've actually, uh, I've got a videographer coming with me to come and uh, film it for me. So uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it'd be a great idea just from the Olympic year, maybe get somebody to come and film some behind the scenes footage of me racing. So, uh, yeah, you'll hopefully see that on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, remind me the tag of your YouTube channel. Just Whiff and Twins. At, at Whiff and Twins on YouTube. Go check them out. You can, behind the scenes footage of, of an Olympic racer. Uh, that's great. <clears throat> well, Dan, it's always great catching up with you. Uh, thank you for making the time to sit down and congrats again on, on a great world champs first Ireland's first world champ medals and obviously first world champ golds. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been great. You've been listening to the swim swim podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take swim swim podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.